Hey folks, Damien from Southpaw Designs here. And uh, in today's software tutorial, I had a request from a subscriber that asked me to go through the entire process from start to finish using Fusion 360 to create a project. So that's what the purpose of this particular video. We're going to start with a blank screen, show you how to create our material, create a very simple little design. We're just going to make like a little nut tray or something like that or a coaster. I don't like to call it a coaster because I've done a lot of coaster related videos lately, but it's a simple design. Then we're going to take it and specify our tool, create our paths all the way from beginning to end to create our G code. Okay, this is not a deep dive into using Fusion 360. This is a how do I start and what are the exact steps from start to finish to create a complete project. Okay, uh, if you do choose to watch this, I will put chapter markers down in the descriptions and then also you'll see it uh, in the video itself. But I would encourage you if you do jump around, don't, I wouldn't encourage you to skip over any parts because of the fact that you could miss something and you'll have to back up anyway. So I would encourage you to watch this from start to finish. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to write them in the comments below. That's always important to us. And uh, I'd love to have your subscriptions. Let me go ahead and ask for that and hope you uh, enjoy this content. Okay, so we are inside of Fusion 360. And the first thing I want to show you is we have this pan tool. We can kind of click and drag. We can zoom in and out. So we can work with different sizes here, magnifications. We can also orbit. I don't like to orbit too much until I have something on there because it's easy to, uh, to get, get kind of lost in there. So let me go back here to pan. Okay, so there's just a couple of those quick tools right there. Now remember, this is not intended to be a deep dive into creating anything elaborate. I'm just taking you through this from start to finish of a particular project and showing you a couple of key things here. So let's go ahead and create a sketch. We don't have any work piece on our, uh, on our stage right here or on our planes. So I'm going to choose this plane, which is I'd refer to as my X plane. And uh, for everything that I've done within Fusion, X plane is fine. This plane is one you typically are going to use. I'm going to drag out a sketch and I'm going to type in the exact precise size that I'm going to be working with. I'm going to assume it's nine by nine and that's going to represent the size of my material. So once I have that, now I'm going to hit enter and that finalizes it and I'm going to extrude. Now extrude, if, we're, if, we're, if I'm creating a piece of material, I need to know how thick it is. So let's assume that we're working with a 0.75 inch piece of material, plywood, whatever. Um, I'm kind of classy, so I'd never use plywood, just, just cheap people use plywood. So I'm using some plywood. And uh, so we've got our plywood right there or our three quarter inch piece of, of walnut, whatever it is you want to work with. Um, and uh, so here we go. So we got our material right there. And so now what we want to do is I actually want to cut a little bit of a pocket in here. So I am going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to select this face, create that sketch there. I'm going to go ahead and center it up a little bit. So there we go. And so now I'm going to go to my two pointed rectangle and I'm going to start here and I'm going to finish here. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to apply some fillets to it. So here to here, and that's a two inch fillet, which is awful big. So let's go maybe a one inch fillet. And so now when I come to the other ones, I've got a one inch fillet all the way around. So let's suppose it's either a, a coaster. I feel like I've done so many coasters recently. Maybe I shouldn't use that as an example. Um, maybe it's a nut tray or a nut dish. There we go. So I've created another uh, I've created another sketch on top of this. Now this isn't a pocket or I'm not extruding anything else. As of right now it's just a sketch. But let's suppose I wanted to actually turn it into a little pocket. So what I do is I'm going to select it then I'm going to do the same thing that I did before when I extruded out my material, except I'm going to go in instead of out. If I drag it up, we're actually going to create something and add to it, but that's not what I want to do. Uh, I'm going to set it to negative 0.15. There we go. So negative 0.15. So it's going to put a little bit of a pocket in there. Also notice that it turned the operation into a cut instead of a new body. So that shows us that we're actually going to be cutting into it. 
Okay, so there you go. Now, one thing you need to remember about working with Fusion 360 is it's really more CAD CAM software. It's not just it's not just CNC. It's CAD CAM, so you can build some really elaborate stuff with it. Um, I think for an average CNC user, it tends to kind of go overboard. I'm not saying it's not a great program, but for the average CNC user, you may or may not need anything this elaborate. I think that. Um, uh, I think that uh, VCarve Pro or Aspire is a good software to use for the average CNC user. But so here we go. So we've got our uh, we've got our, our work piece cut. Let's assume that's all we wanted to do. So now from design, we're going to go into manufacture. Manufacture is where we're actually going to set up our milling, and that's what it's referred to in here. I'm going to drag this over just a little bit, just kind of center it in there. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to create our setup. Now I always forget this so I'm gonna go ahead and do it the way I always forget just so you can see what happens uh, new setup so I'm gonna go through the process to create a new setup and I'm gonna select my machine and I already have the Onefinity Woodworker loaded in here and you notice those are my machines. Now I can go into the Fusion 360 library. One of the reasons I'm doing this was because one of uh, my subscribers actually said, hey, why don't you go through a uh, this process with Fusion 360? So that's what I'm doing. So you can actually choose it from the list and that's the main process is just choose it from the list and it loads all those, all those defaults. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm using my uh, X50 woodworker which is what I have. I'm going to go ahead and select that so that's going to show up as my machine and here's the problem I run into every time I always forget to save it so what I really need to do first is I need to save it uh, I'm going to call this um, workflow and I'm just going to save it right there so now now I can go in and I can finish my setup. So you can't create a new setup until you actually save the project. Every single time I forget to do that. This time I almost intentionally forgot. So I'm going to choose my Woodworker X50 and then here we go. Now the XYZ, uh, typically for me my XYZ point, I'm going to set the origin right here in this bottom left hand corner. You can set it wherever you want but if you're probing with a Onefinity, which if you ever watch any of my videos and you see me probe, probably 99% of the time I'm probing from this bottom left-hand corner from the top of the material. Okay, And so that's what we're going to do. Now you can change that if you want to, but I'm not going to do that. Okay, So really right there, uh, now we can come in and we can choose side stock offset. I'm going to leave these defaults. Um, not worried about that, not worried about that. Okay, so now I just click OK and I am good to go. So I've got my setup right there. Now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and create my pocket. All right. So this is just going to be a 2D operation and because of the fact that we're working with something pretty simple uh, I'm just going to go to 2D and you have a lot of different things that you can do in here. You can do adaptive clearing. I'm going to do a pocket, uh, face, contour, um, thread, bore. A lot of these I've not done. The main ones that I've worked with, I've worked with chamfers, engraves, uh, 2D contour, faces, and uh, 2D pocket and 2D adaptive clearing. I've done each of those. Now for this, all we want to do is we want to clear out this hole which is referred to as a pocket. So I'm going to choose 2D pocket and then you're going to come over here. Let me pull that out there. We're going to select our tool. Now for something like this all we're doing is a pocket. So I could easily use from the local library I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab a quarter inch end mill right there uh, because those are nice rounded edges and I want to be able to take care of it pretty quickly. So I'm going to select this end mill. It's a quarter inch. Now here's one of the things about working with um, working with Fusion. It, it assumes that you might have a coolant in there. Well the Onefinity doesn't have any coolant so I need to do that. Now I generally I'm going to choose, okay, yeah, all these are for metals and plastics. So I'm just going to stick with custom right there. I'm not going to change any of this uh, surface speed, spindle speed, cutting feed rate, all that kind of stuff. I generally like to leave it unless I have a reason to change it. 
Next we go into the geometry and we have to choose our selected pocket. So I'm going to choose that pocket right there and that's what I'm actually going to be cutting out because you can have a lot of different things in here but you're just saying that this particular bit is going to cut this pocket or whatever I choose. So that's selected. Alright, stock contours. Now one of the nice things that I really like about these is that most of these tools are going to have pop-outs and they're incredibly detailed. So if you need to know more than what I'm showing you, which you obviously will if you're using Fusion 360, they've got some very detailed explanations on any one of these, uh, on any one of the, one of these tools. All right, I'm not going to change any of these things right here. Now I'm going to come into heights. Okay, so now let's kind of uh, turn this around a little bit, and there we go. So what we see right here is you see, uh, let's see, we see our clearance height, and then we have a retract height with an offset of 10 millimeters. Um, we have the stock top. What's going on there? Oh, I know. I need to come back and select that pan. There we go. Okay. And uh, so we have all these different heights right here, which you got to be careful, especially if you're using some type of hold down clamps that your bit may run across. You want to be careful of that, but you want to make sure you have plenty of good uh, clearance right here. Um, and then you've got your offsets and things like that. I don't need to change that. Next, we have our passes. Okay, tolerance is 0.1 millimeters, which is pretty precise. Uh, let's see, finishing passes. I'm not going to do any finishing passes. If we wanted to, we could do a finishing pass. And it's going to just kind of clean that up a little bit. I'm not, not worried about any finishing passes, though. Maximum step over is set to 6.35 millimeters. Um, and uh, as a general rule, you want your step over to be half the size of your uh, your bit. That's the way I typically do it. So since my bit's a quarter of an inch, I'm going to choose three millimeters, uh, 3.175, which is basically an eighth of an inch. Um, stock to leave. I don't want to leave any stock. I want to go ahead and just clean it all out. Uh, now the stock to leave is if maybe you wanted to go through with a finishing pass and clean it up, uh, you can leave a little stock so that that finishing, that finishing pass will, will actually do the cleaning. All right, I'm not going to worry about smoothing or feed optimization. And then right here, generally not going to change anything uh, in this. So with what we're doing here. So I'm not really worried about that. So now I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And we should be good to go. Select that orbit right there. Now we can come up to, let's see, is it in actions? Actions and simulate. Okay, I don't see any errors over here. This turns green, which generally means that everything's good to go. Um, and then it actually, you can actually see the tool paths right here. So let's go ahead and simulate. And I'm not going to speed it up incredibly fast. Oh, hit the play button right here. You'll see it goes down, burrows in. speed up the speed there a little bit and we are done so you see how it actually goes all right so I'm gonna go ahead and exit simulation now I'm actually ready to export the G code so now I'm gonna come into actually if we see machining time right here it'll show us this is gonna take a grand total of about five minutes five minutes and ten seconds so we can see that right there go to actions generate let's see is it in generate select a tool uh, do you want to generate no no I'm sorry wrong one go to actions post process and we're gonna check everything here that all looks good I'm gonna put it in my CNC builds folder I'm gonna name it workflow and then I am going to post. And guess what? We have created the successful G code for this project. Take this G code, plug it into your CNC, hit go. 
don't forget to actually turn on your router and you should be good to go so hopefully you enjoyed this you got something new uh, got something good out of it and uh, if you have any questions about it please write them in the comments below and i'll be glad to answer